This is actually the first video I've recorded for this channel. I figured that I would post this video second or third or whenever I actually end up posting this, if at all, because I wanted to give an actual tour of the car first, but I also wanted to get these parts in tonight. So let me show you what I got. So here's what we're looking at. Starting off, we have a BT45 toy Lexus and Toyota by USA Spec Bluetooth adapter. This plugs into the back of the radio. It'll help me so that I can stream my music wirelessly through Bluetooth. It has a USB port for charging and auxiliary input as well. And I bought this because I stream music from my phone all the time whenever I'm at work in cars and whatnot. The Lexus currently has Bluetooth built into it, but it's only for calls, so I can't actually stream my music. What I've been doing so far is using my cassette adapter, which has been great and all, but I'd like to upgrade to something wireless so that I can charge my phone at once, since I use an iPhone and the lightning port is taken up by the auxiliary plug. Next up, we have a Garmin Dashcam 46. I have dash cams on my Explorer. I think that they're very important to have in your car because you never know when you'll need to use it. I bought this one. It is the second step up from the bottom. I figured I didn't need anything fancy, but it's enough with the screen. You can see it's 1080p, is voice control, forward collision warning, and lane departure alerts, red light speed cameras, travel laps, and GPS enabled automatic incident detection. So it's got pretty much everything I need. It's got the little screen on the back, so this one's going to be installed in the front. In the back, I will have a Garmin Dashcam Mini. I figured I didn't need one with a fancy screen and everything. This is the same one that I have in the Explorer. That's in the back. I'm going to be mounting this one in the back as well. It's got a 140 degree camera, 1080p as well. Uh, just the usual stuff connects to the other one so I can have both of these paired up together, which will be nice because I have one for the front and one for the back. For each of my dash cams, I have my micro SD cards. I got 128 gigabytes for each one. A little sand disc here, nothing too special. We'll just go into each one. And the nice part about these cameras is as they begin to record more, they begin to overlap the old video. So I'll never have to worry about actually deleting things off manually. While these dash cams are great and all, they're nothing without power, so I bought this from Anchor. It is a four-port USB splitter, which hopefully will have enough power to actually work off of this. What I intend to do is plug that into the USB port on the bottom of this behind the dashboard, run this, have this into the glove box, and have two of the ports hooked up here to have one dash cam running to the back and one to the front, so we will see if that works. And last but certainly not least, in case that isn't long enough, I bought a 10-foot USB extension cable, so... You can see it's got the male end of the USB-A cable right there. Fancy cable and all, it's braided and all, and then that'll plug into here. So these both come with 15-foot cables. In the event that that is not long enough, this will plug in. And if it is long enough, I will just return this. So whatever I don't end up needing, it's going back to Amazon. So let's get working. Now, initially, I plan to do this tomorrow because tomorrow I'll have more daylight. However, I'm eager and impatient, and I was excited to get everything in, and I might be doing some driving tomorrow, going out to hike or something with some friends. So I figured I'd get it done tonight just to have it done and have the dash cams in for as long as possible. So it's currently 27 degrees out. Weather forecast says it feels like 16, but I'm still out here. I want to get it done. So we're going to try to get it done. So I have all my stuff here. I figured that right now while I'm out here, I'm going to put the key in and eject old faithful right here. The old cassette adapter. Free free and opening the door to financial Turn off the radio. She served me well so far. I picked it up for five bucks at Walmart, and honestly, for the five dollars it was, it was Walmart branded too. I was very impressed. It had pretty good audio quality. I don't know if that's just a good sound system in here or if that's the cassette adapter itself, but it's lasted me since about October. I have pretty much zero complaints. It did pretty well. I just wanted something wireless because you can see that I have a plug right there where I usually have my phone plugged into, and then I have the plug right here, so I can't have both plugged in at once. It's a compromise I have to make. So let's see what we're dealing with unboxing this here first. So when you pop it open, here's what you got. You have your USA Spec BT45 toy Lexus and Toyota product manual. It has all the models that it's compatible with on the back. You have all the cables right here. This plugs into the back of the radio and takes over for the cassette adapter. Or not the cassette adapter, sorry, the CD changer, which is inside of the glove box here. I will no longer be able to change out my CDs, which is a shame because I own zero personally. But that'll come out there. I gotta remove pretty much everything right here and a couple of the panels down here just to be able to access this. So I don't know how hard of a job that is. I guess we'll find out in a minute. But here's the actual module itself right in here. Here's the microphone so that you can hook it up to have a better microphone for your calls than the one that's built in. So I'll pop out this module now. So here's the module. It's actually a lot lighter than I thought it would be, but you can see everything plugs in right here. The instruction manual will cover that, so... I'll get working on that. USB port for charging only, which is where I anticipate on plugging in the dash cams. 
So we will see if this works. Now, two more things I want to mention before I get started. I'm going to wait to unbox everything else until I'm actually done installing this or until I'm about halfway and then I need this. And the second is you'll notice that I have this cable right here that already runs up into the glove box. There's already a USB spec little adapter installed in there, but this one goes to an old iPod connector. You can see though that this cable connector has seen better days and it's one of the old 30 pin connectors instead of the new lightning one. So I'm unable to use it. So I'm going to remove that one and I'm going to install this one in its place. Uh, it'll be relatively similar if you don't have one installed already in case you're doing this and you're following along, but it's gonna be relatively the same. So I'll just show you what to do. Now, as far as tools go, I have my little electronics toolkit here from Amazon Basics. It's got a few little pry tools and whatnot because it's meant for pulling apart like laptops and tablets and devices like that. So I'm hoping that that'll be able to get off the plastic pieces here. And then I also have my DeWalt mechanics tool set, which has a ratchet set and everything in there for getting off any bolts. Um, Amazon also sells like little trim removal tool kits. So they sell like little pry pieces for down here. So I'd look into getting one of those. If you don't have anything, it's better for that than like a flathead screwdriver or something. But in the event that you don't have that, like I do, something like this will work just fine. So I'm going to start by removing these two plastic pieces here. This one here and this one here. I found that if you start right around here, kind of work your tool in here, whatever you're using, and just pry up, it'll pop right off like that. Same thing goes for the other side. Now this one starts a bit further back, but same type of concept. Just pry up here. You will see that it starts to pop off around here. So you might have to move the seat back to get underneath it here a bit more but really it's just the same type of pry and pull. All right, I pried it down here. Let's pop this off, toss it down there for now. All right, my bottom trim pieces here are removed as you can see. So now you wanna get off these wood panels right here. What you wanna do is just stick your pry tool underneath of here and just kind of pull towards you. Stick mine under and pull it. Just kind of pull more with my fingers, honestly, but it'll just pop out like that. And then you just pop it up around the rest of the top and you do the same to the other side. Like I said, I pried at the bottom from both sides, and then you just kind of pop them out going up along each side. So you can see this one's out, and this one's out. On this one, you have the airbag light connector, so you want to push down on the little button on the tab right here. Just kind of pull it out from there. I'm trying to see if I can do this one-handed. Let's see if I can do it. All right, I can't. So I'm going to put down the camera real quick and just pop it out. Once it's good, you just pull it out like so. And then on this one, you have the connector for the hazard lights. So for the panel on the driver's side, this is the hazard light connector right there, the four-way flashers, depending on what you call them. You just unplug that little connector right there, push down on that tab, and it will release it from the bottom of this connector right here, which is on the back. You can see the vent up here. Now the next piece I'm going to be removing is this little ashtray right here and cigarette lighter. This is also a pretty simple removal. You just kind of grab it back here, or use a pry tool if you'd like, and just kind of pop it out from each side, like so. Just kind of trying to do this one-handed while holding my phone. I might have to put it down again. I'm going to put it down. Once you have that out, you'll see a couple little power connections that you have to remove. This is for the light inside the ashtray, and this is for the actual power to the cigarette lighter itself. So you're just going to want to pop the connections off of those, and then you can put that aside. All right, I've got the two side panels removed, the cigarette and ashtray removed. That's all down there. And you can actually see the old USA spec module right here. This is for the old iPod iPhone interface. So I'm going to be removing that as well to install the new one, and I'll show you how to access everything in the back in just a second. Now your next step is to remove the actual radio. There's four bolts holding it in. There's one here, one here, one here, and then the last one is right down here. So you're going to want to remove all of those. They're all 10 millimeter bolts. I have a little socket extension on my ratchet, so I'm going to use that and take out all of them, and then I'll come back once I'm done. Once you have all of those bolts removed, your next step is to pull the radio out. It just kind of comes towards you. There's four clips in it. You can just see it kind of comes a little bit loose once you pull it. And I want to pull this out as evenly as possible. So I'm going to grip here and here. And I'm going to put down my phone because I want to make sure that I'm not, you know, yanking to one side or it doesn't pop out too hard. So I apologize if you want to see that part, but I'll be back in a second. So I have the actual dash radio unit out right now. You can see how loose it is. I'm going to come over to the passenger side because it's easier to tilt it this way rather than this way. So I figured it would just be easier to work on it from that side since you don't really need to go connecting or disconnecting everything. Sorry. You just kind of have to disconnect from the right side or the passenger side from the inside. So I'll give you a look at that in a second. Now, once you're over on this side, you want to pull the radio over. You'll see that there's a first set of plugs down there. That one closest to you right there with the 
green and blue wires sticking out closest to us, that's the one that you want to pull out because that's connected to the CD changer. So pull that out. Now this little plug ended up being way more of a bear to remove than I'd like to admit, but it finally came out. So I have my new wiring harness right here. I'm going to take this one right here. Camera's not really focusing in all too well, but it's the one with the wires like this color bundled in together and that'll just pop in there and that one's placed so i'm going to do that real quick off of camera just because i only have one free hand and then i'll get right back in a second now this is my second plug that comes off of the new wiring harness right here the wires go into the second plug right here but we have another one right here so this is the one that this plugs into so you just connect those two so now you can see the wiring harness is all connected that is going to be tucked behind the radio back here you see the little panel right here, and I'm gonna remove my old USA spec module back there, pop that one out and then put in the new one. All right, so after connecting the wiring harness right here and connecting the wiring harness right here, I took it down and I plugged it into the back of the module itself right here. Then I went on the Bluetooth and I hooked up my phone and this is the combination that I found that works. I have one and four down and two and three up. And I hooked up my phone, set it to disc four on the screen right here. I put my keys in so you can see it. And you can see that it's connected to my phone now. So I'm wirelessly streaming music. Finally got that working. So now it's time to put this all together. I think I'm gonna remove the old box just so that space isn't taken up. And I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in the glove box right here. So I'll just find a place for that in there. And then I'll hook up the dash cams. All right, here's the old module that I pulled out. You can see it's got the iPod connector right there, radio connector right there. You can see this one's a lot more big and made of metal, but yeah, probably just gonna end up tossing that. Can't think of a use for that with the busted cable. So I'm gonna try to get that iPod cable out of there. That's the one that you see hanging down right now. That's the end of it right here, but I'm gonna take the Bluetooth module and tuck it back here and then tuck it somewhere down into the glove box. So that's what's coming next. For better access behind the glove box, I removed it. There's a little pinch tab here that you pull in and then push down. Same with right here. It's easy to do both at the same time. And then these two little locking pins right here, you just kind of pull it and it'll pop right out. So now I'm gonna take out the screws here and here and then remove the panel so I have access to the back there and I can thread the wires through. Now there's a wood panel right about where I'm holding this one. You just kind of pull it off. And once you have those screws out, you just pull this off. It's held in by plastic tabs. And yeah. You can see there's a little opening right back there. That's where I'm going to thread in the wires. So I'll do that right now. So I finally threaded all of that through. My light right here for the glove box, I didn't deem that essential. So I took it out. So I'm just running the cable down here. So I'll put this panel back on the bottom. I did have to remove that one. Put the screw back here, here, and here. And then I will plug the module into there. I will close off the glove box and I'll begin to put it back together. So the rest of the wires, can't really see it all too well, but it, it's pretty well tucked back there. So... Shouldn't have to worry about that, so that should be good to go. I already have my glove box reinstalled. You see I pop it open, and there's the Bluetooth module. So I figured it was more effort than it was worth to try to get the CD changer out, so I just left that. I did remove my light, like I said, because it's just kind of useless and it's burnt out anyways. So if I just close that up, it does have a bit of resistance closing now if the wires are overlapping, but I don't open this too often, so I'm not too worried about it. So I'm just gonna leave it in there like that and start putting everything back together. First thing you want to put back where it came from is the actual radio console itself. It's clips at the top, clips at the bottom if you remember, and you just want to push it right in. Now that the radio is clipped in, I'm putting in my 10 millimeter bolts, one there, one down here, one up there, and then one down there as well. So I'm going to screw those in. It's starting to get really cold. All right, now that the last one's in, I'm going to test the radio, make sure that everything's still working, and then I'll get back to putting everything together. Agree. Let's test out our climate controls. Connected. There's the Bluetooth connecting to my phone. Cool. Let's try AM radio. FM. Tape. No tape. Sorry about my audio cutting out right there. That was my Bluetooth kicking in, but... Next, I'm going to put in these little ashtray and cigarette lighter thingies, and then that should be good to go. Then I'm going to get in the wooden panels, and then last but not least, the trim pieces down here. 
once you've got everything plugged back in, you got this plug here, this plug here for the cigarette lighter, and then there's a little green light that goes with the cigarette lighter, but my little casing right here snapped off and I'm not too worried about it. So you just reach up and pop it back in like you pulled it out. Once that is in, you will get your wooden pieces back in. Remember there's an electrical connector on this side, and then there's an electrical connector on this side for the airbag lights and hazards respectively. So remember those and then pop them back in. I've got my connector back in here for the airbag light. Then I have my connector right here for the hazard lights. Gonna test them. Got them working. So we're just gonna pop them back in. Remember the connectors are all down the side and all up at the top and the bottom. So get those in and then you're good to go there. Last but not least, you wanna get in your plastic trim pieces here. So remember this one tucks up here. And you just push it down, it locks in like that. And then this one, I'm holding that backwards. Sucks up here. If I can get it with one hand, which apparently I'm unable to. Oh, that is why I am, no. Why, why can't I figure this out? There we go. I'm sorry, I'm getting cold, but there you have it. Radio is all back together. If you tuned in just to learn how to do that, then there you go. But if you're watching to support the channel or if you're watching to, you know, just figure out, like, see what I'm doing and everything, getting the dash cams into, keep watching. Also, you can see how cold it is. There's my breath. So it's nice and toasty out here. Sarcastic, of course. But I'm going to get the dash cams in still because I'm determined and I want to get this finished tonight. I've had the doors open for a while, so I'm worried I might have killed the battery even though I have the lights and LEDs. So let's make sure the engine still starts bit slow on turning over but still turned over and the tire pressure lights on that's new but let me just also make sure that the air is coming through the vents now since I just reconnected these and it is blowing through nice and cold because the engine has yet to warm up so there's that all right we're on to dash cam number one kind of pop this open here she is looks just like the one I have in the Explorer the one in the Explorer is a little bit nicer but I didn't need anything as nice so this is it. Set this aside down here. Pop the box open. It's got the usual stuff. Mounting equipment, cables, so get that set up in a minute. Mini dash cam for the back. There it is. Very small. You can see it's smaller than my fingers. Set that aside. Pop everything else out. And it's just more cables and mounting equipment and a charger. My USB splitter from Anchor. Take off a little sleeve right here. There we go. Bam, there you go. Four USB ports, one plug. Then you've all seen a micro SD card. You just pop it in there. And this is the extension cable if I need it. So there's that. So uh, surprise, I took the CD changer out because I decided that it would be easier to mount in the little box with the Bluetooth little module there. So figured I'd have more space to do that if it was gone. So I'm gonna put everything back together and we will proceed forward. All right, now that the CD player is gone, I put some Velcro stripping down there and some on the back of the USB plug as well. So I'm gonna mount those down here and then I'm going to put everything back in, get some wires run out for the dash cams, get them up there, get them in the back, and then hopefully I'll be good to call it a night. Here's what we're looking at now. We got the wires tucked up there. Those are both Velcro down. Now the glove box will be able to close and the wires will still run out. So now I'm going to mount the cameras. All right, I have the dash cam mounted where I'm realizing it's probably too close to the mirror, but we'll see if I need to move it. I'll move it. Uh, I just have the wire running down here, but I'll tuck it behind in a second. But it's looking like this will be a good place for it to go right up here by the mirror. All right, so I actually moved the dash cam onto the little wiper control module right there. I'm having a bit of trouble tucking the wire up because unlike the Explorer, it doesn't want to stay up here and there's no place to tuck it in going on the side. But I think I'm just going to move on to putting the back one on and then I'll figure that out in a minute. Back camera's mounted up. I have it right here. You can see where it is in relation to the door. I'm probably going to run the wire over here, like out the store panel and then over here and then up to the front. The rear dash cam is wired up. We got the extra cable in there. That cable runs underneath of this stripping right here up here you can see a little bit right there and when you come around back it is all tucked in underneath of the floorboards and it pops out right there springs over to here and then connects right there 
All right, well, I put a lot of work into this tonight. Cable's still hanging. I still can't find a good way to mount it, but I'll figure that out tomorrow. This Velcro also came up, so got to work on that. But overall, got a lot of work done tonight. It is 10.55, so it is getting really late, and I started over three hours ago. And like I said, the wind chill was 16 when I started. I don't know what it is now, but it's definitely gotten colder. So I'm going to pack up enough just to be able to close it up. And then I'll take a hit at it tomorrow morning before I go to work. So stay tuned. Back out with the Lexus after work. I have a new USB extension cable. I'll show you why in a second. The gray cable is definitely long enough for me, but it was way too long. As you can see, I have all this excess cable. So I bought another one because this one plugs in underneath this panel right here. I'm gonna run this one. It's about a little less than four feet shorter, but I'm gonna run that under and see how much extra we have there. All right, so we've got the dash cam cable running from the back. It's in the back of the door sill where I'm pointing right now. Runs underneath the here. I'm gonna put the trim back on top. You can see that it connects to this wire just right here. I'm gonna tuck that down into there and then put the cover over top of that. Then it runs up the side panel up here. You can see the little bit sticking out right there, which I'm gonna fix. And then it runs out of here. Now there's a lot less extra cable. I'm just gonna cinch that up with a zip tie and probably mount this back down. The pad came off of here, so it's not sticky, but I have some 3M tape I'm gonna use and then I'll mount that back up. So for this, I'd mentioned that I could not get this to stay up for the life of me. You tuck it in, it falls right back out. So as much as I hate to do it because I like it to be neat, I might just use a little bit of electrical tape just for temporary sticking up there. Just kind of like tape little bits up there every few feet and then run it down the side and get it plugged in. So I'm gonna get working on that. I might've spoken too soon about what I said with that one. I got the wire actually tucked up in there without any tape. You can see it does come out a little right there and a little right here. Then I have it running down the side weather stripping right here. Kind of goes down there. Down underneath and then comes out this hole right here. So I'm going to mount everything back up. Get these pieces back on. Get the glove box and trim pieces all back together. And it should be good to go. As a quick disclaimer, I never realized until after filming this video that tucking the wire down the side of the pillar along the weather stripping like I did makes the wire run along the side curtain airbags. I would advise against actually tucking your wire back there because in the event of airbag deployment, it will launch out the wire. If you choose to do so, you are doing so at your own risk. So just a quick disclaimer there. All right, in the old CD tray right here, we have the radio module for Bluetooth. Then we have our wires plugged in for the dash cams. They're all bundled up right here. You can see I taped them up to keep them secure. So I'm gonna put the glove box and bottom tray back on now, and then I should be good to go and show you the final results. All right, I'm all done with setup. You can see that my phone is on the screen right there, Michael's iPhone, because the Bluetooth module is currently active. You can see I've yet to clean up, but I'm not gonna record the whole cleanup process because, well, it's not very entertaining. Looking at the glove box, you can see I have the Bluetooth module mounted right there where the CD changer was, along with the dash cam and wires there. As far as the front dash cam goes, wire, like I said, goes up here, out here, down, and then into the glove box. And the other one runs underneath of here through the back door. And then you'll pop open the back door right here and you will see my camera, which is recording. So I'm gonna tuck the wires back a little bit, make that a bit more concise, but overall I am done. So thank you again for watching. I hope to be able to post more good content soon. Thank you.